Hi Leo, welcome back to the Warrior's Journey Tarot. This is going to be your reading for September 2020. I'm going to pull a Celtic cross with the Muse Tarot by Chris Ann Donnelly. So, <coughs> let's get started. This is for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. For September 2020, please. Can we please get a reading for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? For September 2020, please. There we go. Oh, side read. Okay, so temperance and nine of wands. Hmm. Temperance is something that's been really common during the readings. It's a card of bringing balance back into your life, healing and moderation. So that could be staying home, spending less, eating healthier, taking care of yourself. Nine of wands is a card of blocking. So um, it's the Wounded Warrior card where you feel like you have to be vigilant and on guard. <clears throat> so Leo, it looks like just a, a time here with these two cards of healing and being defensive and being on guard in case there's any more trouble coming your way or obstacles. Two of Swords is indecision or needing to make a decision, being pulled in two different directions. So let's keep going. This is for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please. What does Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus need to know for September 2020, please? <clears throat> What's going on for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please? I wait for one card to drop, and that's my sign. It's the end of the shuffle. If it's um, more than one card, like it was just now, I'll tell you what the cards mean. And if it takes too long, I will cut the deck. This is for Leo. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please. This is for Leo. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please. Right, I'm going to cut the deck. Right. So we've got the situation is the moon, which is uh, the new, the full moon coming up. Is it the corn moon or something? The harvest corn moon? I don't know. But it's an, a full moon coming up in the next few days. We've got the challenge. Three of pentacles with three of materials. Consciously, nine of cups. Lovely. I love this nine of cups. Then the Muse of Materials, which is equivalent to the King of Pentacles. Seven of Inspiration in the recent past. The Empress in the recent future. Lovely. Cool cards, cool cards. Beautiful. These cards are beautiful anyways, but specifically these three cards are fantastic. Okay, all right, you right now. Eight of Inspiration. Great. Around you, Justice. Okay. Hopes and fears, six of swords, outcome, two of wands, or two of inspiration. On the bottom of the deck, ace of cups, or ace of emotions. What a beautiful card. All right. I'm going to move this up a bit so you can see it perfectly there. So the moon card is a situation, and it could be just pertaining to right now, specifically around this time when there is the full moon. If not, it could talk about <clears throat> cycles of your period. It could talk about... Um, partial illumination because it's nighttime still, even though there is illumination from the moon, not everything is seen. There couldn't be hidden dangers. It's about your subconscious, your um, hidden feelings coming up right now, your hidden fears and securities in love and romance. It could be feelings of, um, or in life generally, your feelings of either in a lower vibration, um, loneliness, and depression, but on a higher vibration, it could be extremely intuitive. Okay, that feminine intuitive energy with the full moon energy and making the most of it. <clears throat> um, challenge here is three of materials is collaboration, working with others. Um, this could be about your work, your creative work, because there's a few cards of um, 
major creativity and inspiration because of the Empress, who is the queen of like creativity and giving birth. Um, then you have Eight of Wands, which is about inspiration with the fire energy of the wands, creativity, <clears throat> excitement, energy, vitality, things happening quickly. So with the Three of Pentacles as your challenge, it might be that maybe your creativity is being blocked. If you're working with other people, it might be hard to work with them. Um, that's generally uh, Three of Pentacles can be a card for artists. Uh, being famous for your craft, being recognized for your skills. It could be a third party situation too, because the moon does imply as well, there could be some kind of secrecy. In the conscious, you got nine of emotions or nine of cups. How your mind state is that it's like you got, you feel like you got your wish come true, your dream come true. Okay. This is a heartfelt wish with the nine of cups it's beautiful here she's in this like meditative position there's all these jewels around her and she's above the ocean but also there's water swirling around her it's such a whimsy kind of card and it brings out that wish fulfilling positive high vibration energy of nine of cups subconsciously you got the muse of materials so the foundation how you feel it's like the um completion or the uh, mastery of the materials which is pentacles which is like the king of pentacles so it could be that there is a taurus in your life because empress also can be a taurus so you got double taurus here leo just saying um but if it's not and if it's you which is very likely the muse of materials is someone who is doing very well benevolent kind leader someone who's manifested all these things of value in the material world and now you're in a position where not only do you want to be able to do well for yourself you can take care of others you've got big plans like taking care of your community your tribe your um, family and your friends and being that generous benefactor and um, solid like person that everyone can rely on. That's the kind of um, matriarch type energy that you want to be, if not matriarch, patriarch, okay? Deep roots and all that, okay, with the king of pentacles or the muse of materials. Now in the recent past, you got seven of wands, which is a card of having challengers because the six comes before that where you get recognition and you level up and there's congratulations going around people cheering so seven of wands here now you're getting competition people challenging you and your authority and sometimes you know it feels like you were enjoying yourself and your success with six and there's that warning with the six that some of them are cheering but they're they're haters the seven of wands is like you're woken up you know and in the traditional tarot the guy's wearing two shoes that are set different like you've just jumped out of bed and you didn't expect it. And then you've been called to defend yourself. So the seven of wands is challengers <clears throat> coming for you, for your spot and you being able to <clears throat> defend your, yourself or, or maintain your status or your position in spite of the challengers. Okay. That's implied that you can overcome these obstacles. The three of um, the third card, the major arcana, which is the empress here is coming in the recent future. So look at that level up from the seven of wands, which is challengers to giving birth to great creative abundance, fertility, fantastic. Now empress, I also want, because, you know, of Taurus Venus kind of energy with the empress as well. There's the rose of Venus, which is the eight year cycle. And I've been telling every sign it started in June major transformations happen, long-term relationships break up, you meet that new love, or you move <clears throat> locations, move home, or um, you have a child, something major in your life, like a major transition happens within a very potent time, the, the beginning of this eight-year cycle. So with the Empress card coming into the recent future, it looks like for September, giving birth to some new project, if not a literal child, if it's not something that you were dreaming about and hoping for coming to fruition with the Empress card. Okay, it's such a beautiful, positive card. It's that Venus um, goddess energy, that life giving creative, it's all about the arts, fertility, abundance, all of those types of things are implied with the Empress. 
Now you've got the eight of wands. That's how you're feeling right now. Full of energy, excitement, vitality, enthusiasm, making things happen, getting things done, going for what you want. It's full of inspiration. And then around you, you've got justice. So it might be that something around you, the energy of things working out fairly. Um, justice is about balance. Could be a Libra around you as well. If not, it is saying that whatever's been going on, whatever's been unfair, whatever, uh, things will work out fairly. Justice will be served. Okay. In the hopes and fears, you got six of voices, six of swords. Um, I think one other sign got this too. And it could be like you're afraid to leave a situation that's known to you, but it's toxic. Um, so Six of Swords is leaving a, a sad or toxic situation and going to greener pastures, like leaving to find something better, to avoid that kind of um, toxic workplace or something. It could be like somebody, people in your workplace as well. Now, this is what you're afraid of having to do or what you're hoping to do. Either way, it ap applies, depends on you. Outcome, two of inspiration. Now, here you have a person looking out with a telescope, okay? Two of wands is two different ideas, two different inspirations, two different opportunities. Um, one wand fixed to your castle, to your life as you know it. The other wand is just still inspired and wanting to see the rest of the world. This is a card where you want to travel. You want to see things. You want to do things. But you've already built things. So it's like kind of, again, another thing of being pulled in two different directions. Do you want to manifest out there? Or do you want to build on what you have and manifest right here? Ace of Cups is at the bottom of the deck. So any way you slice it, it looks like there's fulfillment, happiness, creativity, abundance, excitement. And what is life without inspiration? Boring, right? So you have tons of it um, and you have wish fulfillment. So this looks really great. Just looks like you're going to be kind of pulled in two different directions, right? We saw that with the two of swords before at the bottom of the deck is having to make a choice. Now I'm going to pull some Oracle cards. Let's get a crystal for you to work with. Um, as I mentioned with the Rose of Venus, that eight-year cycle, Venus is to do with love. And so Heart Chakra, Green Crystals, or Rose Quartz are great to work with during this time to manifest um, more love in your life. Now, we're going to pull a crystal, though, for September. Can we please get a crystal for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020? Can we please get a crystal for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please? Can we please get a crystal for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Oh, there we go. Angelite. Support is all around you and on the bottom. Angel, again, aura quartz. So angels. All right, that's so beautiful. So it could be saying that you have your ancestors around you, your angel guidance for some of you who are doing light work. So let me read a little bit about these cards. And these are the Daily Inspiration, daily Crystal Inspiration cards by Heather Askinosi. I'm going to read Angel Light. And it says, you are not alone. Help and support are always available to you, whether through your friends, family, or guardian angels. Stay open to receiving that comforting energy. Allow others into your life. Reach out when you need your community by your side. Not all of us are comfortable asking for assistance, but trust that others want to help and, in fact, are often grateful to do so. It's okay to accept, even create, the support system you need and deserve. Even the strongest among us have moments of vulnerability. There is strength in allowing yourself to receive comfort and grow from a place of acceptance. So the next time someone extends a helping hand, take it with grace and gratitude. When was the last time you offered help? When was the last time you asked for help? Do you feel deserving of support? Crystal action. Affirm. Support is all around me. Today, practice asking for help from a friend, family member, or guardian angel, even for the smallest task. Now we have also angel aura quartz, which is one of my daughter's favorites. Let's see. Lighten up. Yes, it's okay to lighten up. Life is serious enough. A little levity always adds perspective. Make time for the things that make you smile and laugh amidst all of life's responsibilities. Give yourself permission to prioritize fun. You deserve it. Embrace a childlike curiosity and excitement that you have within you. Be silly. Tap into your carefree, lighthearted nature. 
You know what they say about all work and no play. Stay connected with your innate playfulness so that when it's time for work, you can show up as the best version of yourself. Core questions. What does fun look like for you and what makes you smile? When was the last time you laughed so hard that you cried? Affirm. I allow myself to have fun. Today, find a reason to laugh and let loose. Tell a joke, watch a funny show, or share a funny picture with a loved one. So that's to lighten up and to ask for help if you need it. Do you feel like you are deserving of that support? Is that why you don't ask for help uh, or sometimes do you not offer help? Okay, so that's calling on your angels and support ancestors. This is the um, Botanical Inspirations by Lynn Arujo. And the messages are very short. There we go, white rose. New start and wisdom. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Aristotle. Beautiful. I'll take a peek on on the bottom. Forget-me-nots. Eternal memories. The best things in life are the people you've loved, the places you've seen, and the memories you've made along the way unknown. Okay. So let me read that little bit extra for White Rose. Inspirational message. The petals of the rose are like a spiral. The wisdom you have learned along the way keeps circling back to you, lifting you up to new heights. Even the pain of life's thorny lessons are signs that you have grown and now are prepared for a fresh new beginning. So I'll read Forget-Me-Nots too because it's so short. Like the forget-me-not flower, memories can crop up in unexpected places. Make room in your heart for the tender memories of lost loved ones, right alongside the happy memories you cherish. All right. Now, moving on, let's pull a wild Kuan Yin oracle card from Alana Fairchild. And these are really quick, and they message right on there, and they resonate very well. So let's try these. Get a card, please, for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for <clears throat> September 2020, please. What guidance is there for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please? Okay, those two. All right, it says, The call of the wild divine. Divine wildness requires openness to all of who we are rather than just the parts that seem proper, appropriate, socially acceptable, controlled, or tamed. Then we gain access to our instincts, our bodily intuition. This is knowing without knowing how you know. Trust what you feel at that deeper level, and then you can respond to those messages with wisdom. And then the other one is child's play. So another one about playfulness. Okay, I'll leave that next to Angel Oracle. It's saying lighten up. Conscious play creates energy. It allows us to enjoy the discipline that helps us feel safe, productive, and that we are making progress on our path. It opens us up to life and increases our vitality and creativity. Without it, discipline and hard work can wear away at our life force. When balanced with loving and healthy discipline, there is no need to fear it. It can only bring benefit. So that's child's play. I'm going to leave that there. All right. I'll pull a card from Gabrielle Bernstein's Miracles Now. And I'll take a peek on the bottom. This is for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please. This is for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2023. Okay. I share my light with the world and on the bottom. My eyes will see what I desire. Okay. Now I'm going to pull some love oracle cards. This is Romance Angels by Doreen Virtue. Let's see what's going on in love and romance for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please. What's going on in love and romance for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please. What's going on in Love and Romance for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please? There we go. Wedding. This situation involves marriage. Okay, don't get excited yet. 
Okay, on the bottom we have, let your friends help you. Ask for and accept support from others. So, I'll read you the wedding part because I don't want you to feel like I'm skimping, but it's quite vague and all over the place. It's like, this has to do with your feelings about your parents' marriage or you wanting to get married or there's going to be a wedding. It's all over the place, but I'll read it. Wedding. Um, you drew this card because of an upcoming wedding, your own or someone else's. It comes to you because marriage plays a role in the answer to your question. For some people, this card could be a validation that you will get married and asks you to keep the faith and continue enjoying your life without worry about your future marital status. For others, this card signals that you'll meet a significant other at an upcoming wedding or experience something there that will lead to new romance for you. It can also represent your parents' marriage and the way it affected your feelings and beliefs about relationships. In a few cases, this card asks you to look at your present and past marriages and review your feelings with the intention of healing your heart and your relationship. Perhaps it's time to enlist a marital counselor to help you both sort out how you feel, and sometimes this card can signal the end of a marriage, in which case the angels support everyone involved as you come to an understanding about the experience and renew your heart's willingness to love. Let your friends help you. It's pretty straightforward, but I will read it. The romance angels are helping you via other people to the degree that you'll allow this assistance, uh, bleh, bleh, this assistance to occur. This card indicates that you need to be more willing to ask for guidance, especially within the context of your love life. For instance, discuss your feelings, hopes, and dreams. Then allow others to help you. Perhaps they'll offer support, give advice, or even know of a potential partner among their acquaintances. This card is a signal that you'd benefit from spending quality time with your friends. If you're currently in a relationship, you'll get renewed enthusiasm by having regular outings with good friends. If you're single, then spending time with those these special people will get you out of the house and bring in fresh energy. Your friends may also introduce you to a wonderful romantic partner. So Leo straight up, it's saying, this is what's possible and get your friends to help you. It's saying that, you know, your angels are in on it. Your friends are going to be of service and help to you. And they could introduce you to someone, but you need to get out of the house and get going and be more playful. Enjoy and lighten up a bit. Um, it looks like you're very serious and focused, very passionate about what you do. It's very creative and you're doing that work. But at the same time, uh, needing to get that playful energy in there and, you know, love is there. If you, if you want to open that door to get out there and let your friends help you. All right. Um, they got one more love Oracle card here. This is the whispers of love by. Angela Hartfield. Can we get a card for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020 in Love and Romance, please? Can we get one more card for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for Love and Romance, please? Oh. So I'm going to take those back and look on the bottom as well. The heart of the matter. This is like the third time. Okay. I'll take a peek, but I'm not taking this card because I didn't mean for it to come out. That was me. Slip of the finger. Spiritual connection. This relationship is a connection that goes beyond this lifetime. But that didn't drop with the drop. That was my sloppy holding. All right. Here we have the heart of the matter. There's more going on than meets the eye. Recognize what this is all about. There's that sweet little child that's sleeping. And of course, this reminds me always of the Don Henley slash redone remake uh, by India Ari of The Heart of the Matter. It's a gorgeous song. It's one of my favorites about forgiveness and so on. And maybe that's something you need to move on. I don't know. Um, be in the present and dream of the future. When we dream, everything is possible. So I'm going to read you both. Okay. These are really short. Let's see. Where's the book? I do not understand why I am always misplacing these. Here we go. Oh, the heart of the matter, 22. Take a moment to get to the real issues in this situation. Sometimes at the very heart of the situation lies the truth of what is going on. Be honest and willing to do whatever is necessary to take care of this. That's over here. And then number 40. 
When we dream, everything is possible. That's this card over here. Make sure you aren't dwelling on things that have passed and no longer exist. Everyone has a past that has helped to shape who they are. This history cannot be erased. Accept the past and look forward to a future. Set goals, dream big, and create together. By doing this, you will eliminate the prospect of visiting the past. Having a goal helps us to focus on what is important. All right. Now, where shall we go from here? Oh, yeah. I'd like to pull um, Love Your Inner Goddess from Alana Fairchild. Let's pull a card from here. Can we please get a card for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020? Can we get a card for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please? we go all right earth goddess beautiful okay i'm gonna do that over there on the bottom queen of hearts queen of hearts okay leave it like that i'm gonna have a sip of my drink all right number 44 earth goddess <clears throat> I'm not going to read everything because we're going to be here forever. Okay. In a reading, to live the dream, we have to surrender the fantasy. This can be painful. It feels like the end when in fact it is the beginning. Once the pain passes, there is the joy of what we have yearned for coming to life. It may not be as perfect as the fantasy, but it will be real and it can nourish us. We can build our appetite for life with dreams, but we cannot be fed by them. The soul requires real life experience to become fully alive, to have experiences and grow. There's a fantasy that wants to become reality for you. Don't let a few gritty moments or human imperfections prevent you from experiencing the joy of heaven on earth. Spiritual Guidance you have beautiful dreams and wonderful visions of what life could be. It is not enough to imagine them. You want to live them. This is exactly how you are meant to feel. For that to happen, you must practice feeling grounded, taking practical earthly steps one at a time to bring your dreams to life. The universe will send so much help your way, but you are the one who must take the steps. Spirit cannot do that for you. Even if you are not sure how your biggest, boldest can come together, you can still ask yourself, what is it that I can do now? Sometimes it will be an obvious action that you can take, and sometimes you'll need to pray and meditate and ask for the way forward to be shown. Uh, remember, you're an earth goddess. You have the power to manifest your visions, to bring your beautiful ideas to life in the world. This is what you are here to do. Remember to love yourself enough to recognize your creative power and use it joyfully each day. So sacred ritual, lie on the earth if you can. Or rest somewhere that feels right for you. Imagine, feel, visualize, or pretend that the earth energy is rising up through your feet into your belly and then up to your heart. She is giving you a shakti but a boost of divine feminine energy from the great goddess to help you feel confident in your own power. Okay, it's like earthing there. Um, 32. Let's see, 32. Okay, in a reading. Your heart has been chosen by the divine to be a temple for spiritual light, an inner place where grace and healing can dwell. This is very special. A temple is kept clean and pure, scented with sacred perfumes of incense, made beautiful with our feelings of reverence and love for the spirit. Kept uncluttered and spacious so that as much spiritual presence as possible can enter. When spirit enters and fills the temple of the heart, things of extraordinary beauty take place. Even the apparently impossible becomes possible. Clear your heart temple with forgiveness, gratitude, and love for the spirit so it can fulfill its divine destiny of being a sacred channel for beautiful divine grace. So spiritual guidance, the mind may believe it has the, got the power to rule, but in truth the heart is queen. You are a true goddess of love, one who consults the heart for answers. You will courageously follow the guidance of the heart, even when the mind doesn't want to surrender to the call of the heart. 
and fearfully lists numerous reasons why it is crazy and stupid and will end badly, you know that the doubt of the mind is no match for the power of the heart. As you continue to honor the divine wisdom of the heart within your own life, you become empowered to help others learn to trust and grow through love's guiding inner light too. And it goes on. Okay, so stay true to your heart wisdom and you will change the world. Sacred ritual, place your hands in prayer and say these sacred words aloud. My beautiful heart is queen and divine love is king. Together they rule the holy kingdom upon heaven and earth with harmony, grace, and joy. I love this deck. It's just, I really feel guilty. On one hand, I want to read the whole thing. On the other hand, it takes a long time. So what to do? All right. Um, the last card is going to be spiritual guidance. This is the Divine Feminine Oracle Cards by Megan Watterson. Full of goddesses, saints, ascended masters, and dakinis from all over the world. It's my favorite goddess deck. Whoa, whoa. Holy moly, Leo. <laughs> okay, I'll just show it to you, but I'm not going to read all of them, and I'll go back and pick one. Zhu Zhuangjing, the mystic of peace. I am peace when my mind is clear, the way is clear. Rita of Kasha, the patroness of impossible causes. I am miraculous. My prayers create powerful channels of possibility. Pope Joan, the pontiff of possibilities. The possibilities are limitless because the soul is limitless. Now, quickly about this one. Pope Joan, she was a female. She was going to wherever it is, okay, the Vatican, I don't know, to go and meet her guy and she would be dressed up as a man now eventually she was so cozy with the people there that they you know they thought she was a man that she uh eventually got voted to be the pope and after they had discovered that she was not um a man from then on they, it's reported like you know they check with some kind of special seat to see if it's a male or a female who's you know contending to be Pope. I don't know. Anyway, so something along those lines is saying like, this is the pontiff of possibilities. The possibilities are limitless because the soul is limitless. So thinking of clever new ways to get around things. And it's kind of like the Hierophant as well. St. Bridget, which reminds me of the Hermit card. Um, Our Lady of Exalted Light, I give endlessly because the light is without end. My soul is all I need. And then beautiful goddess Lakshmi, the goddess of abundance. I choose to feel abundant. Wealth is an inside job. Now, if this is about love and romance, aside from inner wealth, which you have, because you've got all these angels there, and then material wealth, which you have, because you have an empress and you've got the muse of materials or king of pentacles. Lakshmi, in terms of love and romance, when she met Vishnu, um, she was churned from the great mountain when that happened. You know, she came out and... She wanted to be Vishnu's partner. Vishnu said something along the lines of, I don't need you, but you can stay. And that was like the best kind of love connection because it was someone you didn't need, but you wanted to be with. And it was complimentary and they were both great beings and it was harmonious and powerful and a power couple and beautiful in that way, but they weren't dependent on each other. So there's Goddess Lakshmi and Sarah Lakali, Queen of the Outsiders. I have arrived I am where I will always be in love. The Black Madonna, Our Lady of the Hermits, I transform pain and suffering into a greater capacity to love. So when I see the Black Madonna and I see um, St. Bridget and I think Rita of Kasha, okay, with the three nun type energies and um, Our Lady of the Hermits, it's implying here, you know, it might have a child okay and if not like it could be about um being very spiritual and being in your own kind of bubble of spirituality in your own world that you've created and that's fine like it doesn't mean you have to go out and manifest romance and all that stuff if you don't want to if you're focused on your coins but at the same time, it is saying, you know, that if you do want to manifest in love, which there's vital energy in you to get out, to be playful and to have fun and all that stuff, you just have to get out of the house and go out with your friends, basically. All right. Um, let's pull one card, though. This is for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus for September 2020. Thank you for all of those beautiful cards. 
Is it possible to get one message for Leo, the many, as much Leos as we can, one message of spiritual guidance for September 2020? What advice is there for Leo? Sun, moon, rising, and Venus for September 2020, please. This is for Leo, sun, moon, rising, and Venus for September 2020. And for those of you who already have this deck, you can always check it up. That's why I like to go over the cards that come out and let you see them instead of just tucking them away right away. But let's get one card. Can we get one card, please, for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for September 2020, please. Because that was a lot. But thank you. I'm going to pick one. Hmm. You should tell Gil, Lady of the Lotus Born, embodiment is the deepest bliss. My body was made for enlightenment. So she's a Tibetan um, Dakini Buddha. She attained enlightenment in one lifetime. And she was very beautiful. She had a tough time because she was always being, you know, pushed off on here and there. And then when she finally took the spiritual path, that was difficult too. And she got she had um, her guru Padmasambhava, who was the person who came and subdued all the demons and ghosts and stuff like that in Tibet back, back, way back. And um, she was his consort. And then he advised her to get married and she got married. And when she got married, the guy was very handsome, but he was a dumbass and um, always challenging her, always acting like, you know, she's not all that she tries to act like she is like kind of you know you're not that powerful you're not the spiritual being being and you know always kind of undermining her and then in the end they separated and he went off and remarried but she gained enlightenment in one lifetime so um yeah it's saying also the feminine body uh is my body was made for enlightenment in case anybody's wondering about you know females and spirituality and saying you know there's limitations or whatnot and then this knife over here this dagger which is called a kartagea i think uh, it is to cut your ego and dualism all right and then i think that's a skull cup with nectar inside so basically this dakini is saying a whole lot it's one of my favorites in this deck And then on the bottom, Green Tara, the Buddha of Enlightened Action, and Vajra Yogi. Look at this, all the Buddhist ones. My goodness, I want to. And Yamoja, or the goddess of all that flows, also I think is known as Yamanya. So Green Tara is on the bottom. Green Tara is the swift savior ass protectress. She's like the unmarried, youthful version. Um, whereas White Tara is like the mom nurturer. Green Tara is the more kind of. Um, protector protectress so if you have problems with demons and ghosts and like energy at vampires and things of that nature green tar is someone that you would pray to to protect you like growing up i would hear stories about how ghost stories back in the day back home and how you pray to green tara and that she would protect these people you know as they're crossing bridges and whatnot and they were scared to death so leo that is your reading for September 2020. I will be back in the next day or two with your weeklies because now I'm going to be consistent. Okay. All right. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.